welcome to the Arcade Saga. My name is Elkian Wiesma, also known as ETA. Today I have a request a video. I had uh, I did get several requests about especially Miltonia abscesses and a few on the Miltonias as well. Uh, and the last two were from uh, uh, Wanda and uh, Arcade uh, Quest. Yes, <laughs> Arcade Quest. Uh, they both also asked uh, to do some updates or uh, especially a video on how I uh, take care of my Miltonias and, and uh, Mil uh, Miltonia abscesses. Well, today I'm going to talk about the difference between the two of them because they are not very uh, like a Miltonia. So, uh, if you want to grow them very well, I think you should understand the difference, especially in care. But we also have some difference in how the plants look. So, I will continue talking about uh, light levels, feeding, etc. Uh, meanwhile, especially to the new growers under us, I would ask you to, to look uh, while, we going, while I'm going to talk about different subjects. If you take a look at the plants and, and let's see if you can already see some difference between the two of them. Because those are very important to uh, know when you buy a plant, a Miltoniopsis, which has a name tag that says a Miltonia, which happens quite often. So just to get you started and think about, uh, have a look at the plants and I'm going to talk about uh, the first care guide. Uh, speaking of which, I will have in the end of this video my uh, video about the fertilizer that I use, so I will not go to into much detail. I will discuss the levels of fertilizer, but not the products that I use, because I already have a video about it. And I have a very long video, uh, care video about the Miltoniopsis, I will link that as well. That's actually one of my better uh, videos on the channel. It's been watched quite often. It's about an hour, but I really go into, uh, into the details about uh, taking care of them. And also I will link my six easy steps to convert your plants from bark and moss into a uh, cell watering setup. So I made this video with a, a fail, but I would do exactly the same with these plants. So if you are interested in the setup, that is a good video to watch as well. So, okay, let's talk about uh, light levels and then I will uh, talk about the difference between the two of them. So here we go. So let's start uh, with the Miltonias. As you can see, we are now still in a greenhouse. It's a very nice day. It's a bit of sun uh, currently, so you can see some shade from uh, some plants outside. This is a southwest facing uh, greenhouse, so I have a lot of light. My dendrobiums, brushia types, dendrobias, dendrobiums, finally abscesses are over here. Then we have my cattleyas and avanna. So those are on the outside of the uh, greenhouse. That means that those do get, and here are my epidendrums, etc. But those get the most light. A Miltonia is right behind them. So it doesn't need as much light, but it does love light. So I have them placed over here, and as you can see, they all have a LED light above them. Because if we have a dull day, it gets very dark over here. And then I do get very dark green leaves on them. And that means they are too dark. They need more light. So I compensate. And if you get the bo both together, if you think about it, that bit of daylight, quite a bit of daylight, plus the LED, makes that these are getting quite some light, but not strong direct sunshine. They need filtered light. And if you, if you give them filtered lights, they will start to bloom, if they are happy, of course. But then do you get the more longer spikes, generally speaking, on your Miltonias. And they uh, can put up quite some blooms, as you can see on this one. This one is so beautiful. I don't have a name for it, I don't, but it's stunning, stunning, stunning. But anyhow, this so, yeah, they need quite some light, and then they can become quite some uh, large plants. This is a um, Spectabile crush that I have for a few years now, but it's really becoming a plant. And we are now in the orchid room, so there is where I keep my Miltoniopsis. So there's my greenhouse. And this is a complete separate room. The door is not completely closed, but almost. There's a reason for it. Like we discussed, the Miltonias do like a very a bright light, warm temperatures. I didn't speak about the warm temperatures yet, but I will get to it. But uh, they like that and they will get it in the greenhouse. In here it's cooler. 
and in here it's not as bright light so that says uh, a huge thing about the care that I give them my Miltonia abscesses are over here as you can see I have one window a fairly big window over here so my odontoglossum ties uh, oncidiums uh, more regular oncidium types are over there as you can see we have some sunshine now right at the moment of this filming which is beautiful but my Miltonia abscesses are next to the window so that means that they do got to get no direct daylight even not filtered it's kind of light quotation marks bright over here that's it so they get their light well for 89 percent from these led uh, uh, bulbs that i have this is a cool white one and this is a warm white one so i give them two two very large big bulbs and as you can see they're pretty close to it so that means that they still get quite some light this is not shady for me this is filtered light sort of right it's not direct sun sunlight it's it's a uh, hard to explain they still get a, a lot of light <laughs> but not direct there's something about the sun it's it, there's a burning factor in the sun that you take out sort of if you start working with uh, bulbs you can can adjust it let's let's put it like that and you may wonder or you may ask why not use a growing light above them right well first of all that is also used for growing cattleyas under so that is even brighter than than these two apparently because i don't have any burning leaves whatsoever but those are so expensive and as you can see I need quite a lot of lamps to uh, get all my plants some light even down here way too expensive so I started to ex experiment with the LED lamps and I started with one and then I thought well this area does, doesn't get any direct daylight whatsoever so I put in another bulb a warm white to try to create a full spectrum of color so the yellow the green the red the blue and combine the purple a bit of all and not too expensive and and apparently it works because they uh, grow well and they bloom well <laughs> so yeah that's a sign that they uh, it's it's okay it's working for them which is perfect I had them before here I had them in, in the home and I tried for years growing Miltonia abscesses and they I kept kept on killing them but I was determined to find a way to grow them because I love them so much and people can do it so I can do it <laughs> and I did eventually but oh 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 I had to uh, I, it was a long way I, I'm not uh, shy about sharing that with you guys oh the poor plants I, I kept on killing them anyhow I grow them inside give them only a bit of morning sun evening sun I see that on the internet people do that and it's okay and yet mine didn't like it I did get these these awful burned on the leaves not these dying tips but actually the, these, these burning blisters things even from early uh, morning sun so I'm not sure maybe it has to do in what area you are but I'm in the Netherlands so it's not a warm country um, by by any means <laughs> it's more cold gray and rainy maybe it's a a sort of glass where the, the sunlight is coming through and warms the light up because of the glass I don't know but it happened and it kept on happening so I thought this is not working either and then one thing le led to another and then I ended up having them here so that is the light levels talking about temperatures humidity is high this is a bit off uh, but it, it's probably around 90 92 it says now 95 most of the time it's a little bit high but I mean around 90 is high it's incredibly high <laughs> 24 degrees Celsius I can push this button I keep forgetting it but then we do get a Fahrenheit so 67 Fahrenheit with 95% uh, or a little less immunity it's incredibly high so I have my fans running normally when I'm not filming keep that air moving they love it they don't mind it at all but it's high it's absolutely high but I live near the sea and I have this uh, throughout the year normally it's around 80 but we have a lot of rain this summer so it's now around 90 constantly 
I can work with it. You can see I don't have any mold in my pots, but you need to keep the air moving. If you don't do it, and especially when you grow them in self-watering, right? They are sitting in water. With that amount of immunity around them, you will get mold. And if you get mold, you will probably get the orange rot. I should now knock on wood. I didn't have any orange rot for years now, for the last three years, I think. I did make a video about it. If I don't forget, I will put it in at the end of the screen as well. That was an old rotting ball, but it kind of looked like orange rot, like this one we just saw. This is very slowly eating its ball, but it's still firm. So if it's firm, I'm just leaving it there. But if it goes uh, uh, mushy and I can not, if I squeeze it, it will uh, start to break. Don't do that, obviously. But um, then it needs to, I need to take it off if it gets uh, really soft, I should say. But it's still uh, hard and firm. So it's okay. It's just uh, a plant eating a bulb. Um, maybe because I did spray it. Maybe I left some water in there. It's because this is, has a new growth over here. So it's not that old of a bulb. But I have that sometimes. Because these keep getting the red spider mites. Which is awful. Uh, but I did make a video about it as well. I have this beautiful uh, recipe from Miss Argo Girl, which works work wonders. But anyhow, so that's the light and immunity over here. Let's uh, go back to the Miltonias. We will have a look at uh, this monitor over there. And then we're going to talk about a light, uh, I'm sorry, feeding levels. <laughs> So this uh, monitor meter was sitting over here, so it did get some sunshine, some direct light. That's why it's a little bit lower, but still 79%, 30 degrees here, that's, that's uh, <laughs> 86 Fahrenheit. And a lot of humidity, and that's good with these uh, temperatures, I'm happy with that. But again, normally I always have this fan running and I have the door open, but not now because otherwise I cannot film because of the noise and my mics don't working, etc. That's a whole different story, but anyhow, <laughs> just for now for the video. So yes, I'm sweating a bit. It's warm, it's warm, but I can take it. I actually, I kind of sort of love it. I'm not really made for the weather from the Netherlands. I really like the uh, warmer weather, generally speaking, but uh, yeah. So we did uh, discuss the light for both of them. Now it's time to talk about uh, fertilize the amount of that because people always want to know that, which I get, which I get. But I grow them in a self-watering system because I have so many plants and I have not the time to water them all one by one, soak them. And also I have not the time to get them different amounts of feeds. So believe it or not, these Miltonias do get the exact same amount of fertilizer like all my other plants. So yes, also my Miltoniopsis, they get all the same water. Because otherwise I will be here for uh, uh, two days, <laughs> I think, watering all my plants. It's too much. And honestly speaking, I am a big, a huge believer of feeding your orchids weekly, weekly. I know some people hate that expression. I don't. I love it. It's perfect. It works. It works wonders. Yes, these plants get these plants get the same amount of fertilizer as the small ones. That one as well. They do not get much fertilizer. They do get every single time fertilized water inside of the reservoir. So there's always a bit of feed for the plant to take whenever they need it. And that's the key. Take it with a grain of salt. This is my opinion, but that is the quotation mark, the secret. Yeah, there's no, nothing more to it. There isn't, <laughs> and that's the beauty. So yeah, it is very easy peasy. I can water all my plants and I give them the same amount. Of course, now you wonder how much. Generally speaking, in winter, because it's way colder, the plants do grow here in the greenhouse, but not as quickly as in these days, in uh, spring and summer. So it's around uh, 30 parts per million up to 50 at the max. So somewhere between the two, 30 or 40, and that's it. Now they are blooming and growing and, and working on a lot of structures. Do they get much more? <laughs> no. 
It's uh, somewhere between uh, 50 and 100. Most of the times I end up uh, being around 80, 85 parts per million. That's it, you guys. They do not get more feeds. They get feed all the time. That's the big difference. So I do not 100, 200, 350 parts per million in one watering. No, I don't do it. I don't do it. Just let's say 80, 85 in summer. And I think it's enough. I think this is sort of proof that for a lot of plants at least it works. I didn't buy it this big. You will see that on, on, uh, and from the beginning I had it for several years. I grew it on, I didn't change a thing. Maybe some products here and there, but not much. I promise you guys, not much. So, so get, slow that feeding down, but keep on feeding them. Not much, but every single time. It's, it's probably the best advice that I can give you. If you ask me how I grow my plants. That is why I'm taking the time to Hopefully, let you let it set in. Uh, there's nothing magical about it. Well, if you ask me what is magical, if you grow grow plants, I would say having the uh, having a right amount of fertilizer, good products, plus the light, plus the temperature, and immunity. Right? It's a circle. It's not one thing that is kind of magical. It, it, it needs to be balanced, all of it, and that comes with experience. Yeah, it, it's, you don't do it uh, over, at, uh, over uh, within a few days. No, you need to look at your plants and start asking yourself questions. Why is my plant doing well or why isn't it? And I think there's a big difference as well, or a big thing. I think we start to ask questions as soon as our plants, these are the smaller ones, that's why I'm having them in the screen right now, are not doing very well. Then we start asking questions. That is how we are, but why not ask questions about this plant? It's doing very, very well, but why? Why is it so happy? I think that's a good, good habit to get into as well. This is a brush here next to it, also a very large one. Why, why do they do so well? Probably because of the light, in this case. Probably because it loves the setup. Probably because it loves the amount of fertilizer in there, plus the right pH, don't forget that. I will not get into it too much now. Yeah, so it's a circle. It's not one thing, it's a circle. You need to have the balance. That is about the feet. <laughs> yes. Okay. We just uh, this discussed the feed. So yes, all of these plants do get the same level. I hope I made that clear now. We did address a little bit of immunity, and I want to address it as well a little bit further into this care guide, because we go, do get quite often asked questions on Facebook, on my channel, etc., about these constantia leaves, the harmonica shaped leaves. And yes, I have them here and there on my plants. I see the most common answer if people ask about these uh, these leaves and how to deal with it and why they do it. Nine out of ten times people will refer to the immunity, the levels of immunity. Yeah, well you just saw how much immunity I have over here. Yeah, and yet this plant still has them. So I, for 80% I agree with, with that can cause a problem, immunity. But the main thing, and that should be the first on the list, what is the problem of these leaves, is inside of that pot. You need to have a good root system. That is the very first. And then the rest will follow on, like pests, immunity, etc. But at first, a good, healthy root system. So all my plants, all my Miltonia plus that show these leaves do have not enough roots. So the plant cannot drink enough to keep these leaves moist enough, which results in this type, the shapes of leaves. That's the first. Or if I have this problem on a bigger uh, Miltonia plus that at first did well, but suddenly starts to show those uh, harmonica shaped leaves on new growth 
I probably have a problem with my pH. It's inside of the pot. So I might have a root system, but the roots are not able to uptake the moisture and the feed from the water to maintain those leaves. Yes? So there are two uh, reasons uh, why it can happen. Uh, according to the, uh, talking about the roots, so you can have a good root system and yet still those leaves look in your pot of what is going on and if you grow in organic media probably probably the media is breaking down so you need to interfere ASAP yeah in my case I need to measure my pH 9 out, 9 out of 10 times that is the problem so I give them some calcium powder to raise the pH and that's that's it and then they will do fine again in this case I, li I leave them bloom and I do not much this plant just need time it's doing well it's growing well it grows new structures new bulbs you can already see that this bulb is way better than before right this is an older one over here and this one looks way better this one could do better so it's not there yet this is also it has two directions of growth a fairly new one it's still yet still blooming so i'll leave it i know that there are roots coming let's uh get them in shot over here you can see them here beautiful new roots but not enough but it will get there so my biggest tip is keep that pot and the water healthy healthy is for me not too much fertilizer keep it under 200 parts per million that's the max uh, ideally uh, under 100 for metoniopsis and keep it at a nice pH somewhere the pH somewhere in my case is is somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5 that's that's the highest that I go because I water with a pH of 6 up to 6.3 and that's it so I lower the pH while watering and then it gradually goes up again so the plant has time to take out the nutri nutrients that it needs with a certain pH going with it yeah so that's also a sort of circle. We're talking in circles today, but that's how it works, you guys. There's not one solution, there are multiple solutions. So that is my biggest advice. If you have these harmonica-shaped leaves, concertina leaves, probably a problem in your pot and not the immunity. Once again, I mean, it, 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 it cannot get higher than this, can it? <laughs> it's almost impossible. So yeah, that is my proof. Again, take it with a grain of salt. This is just my experience, but this is how I grow them. So if you ask me, how do I grow them? <laughs> this is it. I don't think that is the immunity is a problem. In most cases, it's your plant not being happy. Roots, look at the roots. <laughs> and of course, I just took this example onto my upcutting table. This is the same plant we just saw with their harmonica ship leaves and this bulb doing better. But here you go, you see it's making a root system and that is why it's doing better. But here we have some roots that didn't make it. So it's now trying to make up, here is even a root going out of the pot for those losses. And that is a result, a battle which this plant is fighting and you will see that back in your leaves. It is as simple as that. Solution, well, like I said, keep your uh, reservoir healthy, as healthy as you can. And you guys, take time. Miltonias, Milton, I'm sorry, Miltoniopsis, here we go, Miltoniopsis, take the longest to fully adapt. It, it takes it's at least one year, most of the times it takes two years. And after that, they can start to grow fairly big as these guys up here. That is how long it takes for these guys. And I needed to learn that the hard way because there wasn't really an answer to my question because I grow in self-watering and there are not many people experienced with it at least back in the days a lot of you guys try it out and get, get the information out there <laughs> that's good, it's very 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 good so I need to figure it out but I just left them I was like I, 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 I thought uh, I, I'm doing everything right as, as uh, right as I can and I just left them and that is the biggest tip once you did repot them, once you know you did everything of everything should be right, leave them be and give them time. These are fairly slow growers. One of the slowest, if you have a, if you're talking about slow, a Nelly Eiler. A Nelly Eiler beats these guys, but then a Miltoniopsis comes. It's so incredibly slow, and but eventually you will get these beautiful leaves. And 
speaking of this is the best example this is what we want look at that size of the ball and the leaves coming out it is beautiful it took me uh, three to four years to get these types of bulbs on this one it's a fairly unruly and it's a climber but you can see it's beautiful this is the bulb before this is from this this year or last year with the bomb one that bloomed look it's almost doubled in size good sign that's a good good sign so uh, that was very important uh, for me to discuss because that's a problem the harmonica shaped leaves but uh, keep an eye on your roots you guys <laughs> so that's it and done now we are going to have a close look at the plants and see what the main differences are between the two so uh, let's see how uh, many points you did score <laughs> a little game over here well first of all if i look at from a distance uh, the, the flowers are catching my eye uh, as first and the main difference that I see is that the Miltoniopsis who are on that side. These are the Miltoniopsis, so these are the Miltonias. The difference in the bloom is the size. These are also called the Pensy Orchids. Well, I think you can see why. They have a typical Pensy shape to them, and they have a fairly big lip. The flower itself is, in most of the times, also fairly big on a Miltoniopsis, uh, as you can see. Uh, these are a little bit smaller, but still quite a size to them. And especially if you compare them to a Miltonia bloom. This is a, a bit of a smaller Miltonia. I have a few a little bit bigger, but most of the time they are just not as big i hope you can see it now in the background you see the miltoniopsis and here is the miltonia so um i can grab this one to make it even a little bit clearer i mean look at this now you can see it yes that is better you see a typical miltoniopsis bloom on the left and on the right a typical miltonia bloom so that is a very big difference that is the first thing um to watch for whoops <laughs> okay and then the second one i hope you can see now it's a very bright day but the light is a bit different i have some shade over here but the color of the leaves and the bulbs is different as well it's a bit hard to film because of the light but this i would say is more of a greenish uh grayish greenish color and that is most of the times on a, a miltoniopsis they can be be a bit uh, darker green but if, if you give them enough light the light that they like they will get start to gray up a little bit a bit of a lighter gray greenish color where a miltonia and you can hopefully see it now is more of a yellow green you see it's a bit of a warmer green color there's more yellow in it let's have them both so here we have a more a grayish green color and there a more yellow green color so that is a big difference as well on the both of them like I said it's a nice way to look at your Miltoniops if you give them enough light not too much we don't want any purple on the leaves but nice fairly light grayish green leaves that should be fine it actually should be perfect <laughs> So that is about the color and then we have another big difference between the two and that is as soon as the bulb is matured of a miltoniopsis the big leaved uh, bloomed one it has one leaf sticking out like this one when it's growing it might look as it has two let's uh, let's go over this one uh, for example there you see several leaves coming out but as soon as it uh, matures it only has one left there and others go over there this for a miltoniopsis and a miltonia this is a nice example you can see it has two leaves on the tip of the bulb so that is also a different those are the three main big difference that you can see right away when you see them for sale so that should make it a little bit easier to side from the get-go if you have a Miltoniopsis or a Miltonia. I just wanted to uh, give it a little bit of uh, pers per perspective, <laughs> which are a bit hard. 
not everything is always going well. Even if you uh, do kind of everything well, light-wise, feeding-wise, watering-wise, I still have these struggling plants. As you can see, these are in my collection for a few years as well. Let's let's grab the tag. I have that. Well, that's not going to come out. This is uh, from uh, 20, so four years. Well, it's it looks like it's not not growing a bit. It looks like a seedling, right? But this one is not is in my collection. Well, maybe two years, three years, the max. I think. Ah, you see, 23. It, it probably had a few more bulbs when I bought it, but it's already way bigger and way more stronger than that one. So you have those plants that are just not as healthy. These probably never will do well for me, but I keep them, I have them, but I'm now at a point, if I see an, a better version of this for sale, I will buy it. Because these do get the exact same uh, um, care as these guys. And then you can obviously see the difference. It happens. Yeah, so it's not always our fault. They are just, I think if you have, let's say you have 500 seedlings um, from uh, maybe one mother plant because they, they can produce a heck of a lot of seeds. I think, I'm not completely sure, I'm not into this, but maybe half of those seeds will be nice, strong growing and maybe a, a fourth of those will be very strong and the other half is just hmm, hanging in there probably wouldn't have made it in nature at all because they are just too weak but because we give them the care that they need and we protect them they are still alive but they are not vigorous at all they are just not made to be vigorous they are not sort of made for this world i could say i think i hope that this makes sense and yeah if we are Sort of unfortunate enough in buying a few of those they're here they're not growing well probably never will be and it's okay they may have a virus or so this is something we need to be okay with it happens and we try to our best and we learn we learn from these guys we learn because if you have weak plants you can still let them to grow and bloom probably doing your job very well because otherwise they would have killed over uh, way sooner but I probably will lose these, maybe in, a, in the next couple of years, I don't know, but they, are, they just don't do it for me. Sometimes, suddenly they take off, it happens, but I don't think these will, to be honest. And once again, it's okay, it happens, but try to learn from them. And then you get these who are loving you, <laughs> who are loving your environment, and they show it. And that is where we need to focus on, be on. And the rest, uh, like I said, they are there. Whoops, they are there, and uh, we we uh, it's okay. But I will replace them if I can, because yeah, then we might get lucky and we might get the vigorous ones who can uh, really appreciate it. I think still the plants appreciate our approach, but what, they are not really made for it. And that happens with the Miltonia, with the Miltoniopsis, but also with my Brassia types, with my Dendrobiums, with all of them. There are just those that are not really doing well, and it's okay. And I'm saying that because in, I, I still, sometimes I find it kind of hard to say that a lot, because I feel so responsible for my plants. Do I, so I always, well, I had a tendency to say to myself that it is my problem that they don't grow. I should find a solution and get into it. But yeah, that is not completely honest. I, know, I, I like to, to, to get the best out of myself as a grower. But sometimes we cannot change their DNA. We cannot change uh, their health sometimes, even though we try so much. So keep that in mind and be, don't, don't be too strong on yourself and uh, and yeah as, as i can be that if if i tried everything and if they still do not grow next to the ones who are really taking off i know it's probably the plant so while we are looking at my two biggest miltoniopsis i would like to answer the question that i get from time to time is how to grow uh, what's the best way to grow in miltoniopsis because it can be very uh tricky to grow them uh, they uh, don't tolerate much stress so you need to be on top of uh, the feeding the light and especially the watering 
Uh, other plants may give you some time to adjust, but these will show it fairly quickly, like we discussed earlier in the leaves, in the amount of blooms, in the spikes, etc. These are going over now, so they are not in a bad shape, it's just their time. <laughs> Speaking about uh, signs, but that's a different side. Anyhow, by far, I would say there's one way of growing them the best, if you ask me, and that is in a self-watering pot. Because these need to stay evenly moist. And I did try them in bark, I did try them in sphagnum moss, but I just couldn't get it right. Because if they start growing, you may have a schedule where you water them twice a week, and then you start growing, and they suddenly need water after one day. But you just are in the schedule of watering them every three to four days, something like that, and you are off. And then they are stressed, and they will show the stress in how they grow, etc. So then you are in this uh, circle again that you need to cut off and you need to make your changes because your plant is not happy. To avoid all of that, to make that all easier, way easier, I would suggest growing them in self-watering or a semi-hydroponic setup. Why? Because as soon as your uh, roots of your plants are adapted having water around them, being in a fairly moist setup, you cannot first overwater them and you sort of cannot underwater them as long as you always keep water in there. And that is easier with the bigger pots with bigger plants. I only water them on Wednesdays. Once a week I water them and that's enough because the bigger plants need bigger pots and thereby they get a bigger reservoir where the smaller ones do not need as much water and have a smaller pot thereby have a smaller reservoir and it works wonders it's easy peasy so you need to adapt them and that is the for me it was a hard part but like I said I have a video on it that should be made it quite easy give them time and you, you need to follow the steps and you should be fine and then once you have them settled in, which can take a year or two with these guys, like I discussed earlier. These are very slow growers, but once they do adapt, you get these beautiful spikes, you get the beautiful leaves, beautiful blooms, and you cannot underwater them anymore. And then they start to be very beautiful. We have a little bit of continual leaves over here. That is probably because this is a climber, so the roots are above the media. So that's a sign that this one should maybe be repotted and put in there. Or I need to put some Cintiq in there. Cintiq is the uh, inorganic version of sphagnum moss. And that's, that's something I do. I uh, will uh, show you in an example in a minute how I address the climbers, because we have some climbers uh, on, the, on, the, <laughs> on the, the Miltoniopsis. Also on Miltonias, but with the Miltoniopsis, they, uh, like I said, they are stressed very easily. <laughs> but yeah, that is the biggest um, advice that I can give. And I did receive a beautiful uh, email from Robbie Robinson. To, she shared some pictures and she said, I'm allowed to share the pictures with you guys as well. She is growing them in the same system as I do for a year or a year and a half now, maybe two years, I'm not completely sure. And she has great successes as well. So here are some pictures that she sent at me and uh, I, it made me so incredibly happy. She really does get the setup as well and it really works wonders for her. And, and that is why I'm doing this, this is why I'm making these videos because I struggle with them, this very similar as most growers. And for me, I did find a solution, so I'm very passionate about it. I can talk for hours about it. <laughs> I'm trying not to do it. So I wanted to address that quickly. The climbers underneath the Miltoniopsis <laughs> As you can see, it's growing like this. Not straight, not nicely above the media. No, it wants to search for a higher ground. <laughs> I put some uh, Cintiq around it and it works as you can see. These roots starting to grow again and this is the Cintiq. This is almost always uh, moist and even if it's dry it's not bad for the roots. It's, they still like it but the higher uh, humidity uh, around the roots is really working well. We even get new roots here that weren't there when I uh, did put it up or did give it uh, a little bit more Cintiq. 
but this is how I deal with the, the climbers. As you can see, this is, <laughs> is a very, uh, very bad climber. This is the base of the mother bulb, and look at that so much higher but then we have another growth here that's so much lower as you can see so I just put pebbles like this so I have the pumice uh, underneath here as you can see this is the bigger pumice and some pebbles but I have a few more pebbles in the back so that's even it out so it looks like it's all even uh, with the media but we have more pebbles in the back and a little bit more pumice here because uh, the roots are coming, the new roots are coming from higher up and to compensate the real higher one I use some uh, some Cintiq like I said and for me it works, they love love Cintiq here we have another one, it's also a little bit higher and you see beautiful new roots really going for the Cintiq so that's also a tip for the climbers if you're dealing with climbers that's what I would do and when everything is going fairly right <laughs> and you have a quite vigorous plant you may end up uh, like we saw before with fairly large orchids like these two babies so yes i did take them down and that is because they are starting to spike and what happens is that spikes like these are touching the wall so there's not room enough to grow so therefore uh, I uh, take them down and let them uh, grow the spikes here where there's more, more room because these, these have quite quite a few, well I think two to three weeks to go before they even uh, start blooming but uh, up there we have one was here and the other one was there they're touching the roof like I said in the wall so they need a little bit more light and this is a very big one but I see some marks on the leaves so there's something, uh, something going on there, but I also do see these guys, new growth, and I don't have the markings anymore, so I'm not completely sure. It doesn't look very beautiful, nonetheless it's a very large plant and I think overall it's, it's okay, but there, there's, there might be something in there, I'm not completely sure. But like I said, these two are looking way better and these are bigger, you can see these are very large leaves if you compare them with the, with the rest and these are fairly new ones so it looks like it does do better I'm not completely sure why, maybe it was just a little bit too cold in the winter or I sprayed them with cold water or there might be a sort of virus in there I do think it's okay, it's not a virus, but I'm not completely sure it happens but uh, and this is also a very 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 large one also nice spikes quite a lot of them we have spikes here and there and there and there <laughs> so it's going to be a good one and that's why I, I uh, referred to earlier I don't divide them if I don't have to I see that quite often I can imagine that these you not always have the room for them so therefore you might uh, divide them but Personally, I think the be it's better to leave them as they are because the these plants constantly try to get stronger, bigger and stronger and if we keep on cutting them in pieces, it's, it's not very healthy if you ask me. So if you don't have to cut them, leave them be and let them do their thing and I think the plants will be happier and they will look so much better because in a few weeks imagine all these spikes over here it will be awesome i promise you guys it will be great <laughs> seeing them in bloom so yeah my advice don't don't cut them too much leave the plants alone take care of them and let them do their thing yeah that's that's me but i see a lot of uh cutting and sharing which is great but yeah i think a lot of people uh, do take too much back bulbs off which is not necessary and there's all these types of uh, reserve energy in there in those old bulbs and I leave them as you can see there's a uh, this one doesn't have the leaves anymore but still it has its function so yeah little tip there leave them be if you can and here and there we will get an old leaf and this will drop off and it's okay that's what these do so that was uh, maybe a bit of a, a longer video let's go over here because I have those spikes constantly in my back <laughs> and I don't want to break them but um, yeah I uh, really enjoyed making this video you probably hear it in my voice I'm very uh, happy talking about these guys and sharing the information I shared as much as I could but still 
don't be afraid to ask your questions. It really helps me make my videos better and I love to share everything I know about them, everything I do and uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. So uh, let, let me know in the comments if you have more questions or requests or comments, they're all welcome. Thank you so much for watching and I really, really hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye-bye.